Welcome to What's America Thinking. I'm Julia Manchester. This week, we're talking about something that most Americans drink every single day, bottled water. But according to a new study, researchers from Columbia University have found that plastic bottles of water can contain thousands of harmful nanoplastics, particles so small they can enter your body's cells. Despite all the concerns, the industry is booming. In fact, it's one of the fastest growing industries in the world, with more than 1 million bottles of water sold every single minute in the U.S. alone. That's 50 billion bottles of water every year in the country. And that number is expected to double by 2030. So, bottled or tap, we hit the streets to find out how you're getting your daily dose of H2O. I know personally at home, we spend a great deal of money on a special filtration systems for even our tap water or anything else, because it is, it's important to us that we get the good kind of water that you want to be putting in your body. If I'm here in the U.S., uh, um, tap, uh, it's cheaper. Bottled water, but I live in Mexico, so that's really the only way you're going to get like drinking water. Well, I think there's a bigger issue on like access to clean water. I don't think for me there I would, um, but when I'm home, I'm from Missouri, and so when I'm home, I don't tend to use plastic bottles, but I think it's really hard when you're traveling. So I think it's interesting to think about, but I don't know if there's a real solution that would be a quick fix. Probably cost. That's really the only thing. But in the day-to-day, -day, I mean, life just goes by and, and you do what's convenient and, and what works for your budget that is kind of the reality there. Here to break it all down for us is Matt Campen, a professor at the University of New Mexico College of Pharmacy. Matt, thank you so much for joining us today. Julia, thanks for having me on. Yeah, so just to get started, can you tell us about this new research on nanoplastics in water bottles? What did researchers at Columbia University discover? Well, the big impact of their study was the development of new technology that allows you to see and characterize the types of plastics that are these very, very small shapes. Yeah, you see there on the screen, these little tiny dots that can be magnified and imaged. And then they applied that technology, they call it uh, stimulated Raman spectroscopy. They applied that to bottled water and showed really an alarming number of, of microplastics. I think we knew that these, I should say nanoplastics, even smaller than micro, we knew they were there we didn't have a good technology to tell us how much was there. So on that issue of nano and microplastics, can you, you know, tell us the difference, us lay people, the difference between micro and nanoplastics? Absolutely, it's the same material. The nano is just smaller. The, we, the micro is micrometer. So you go centimeter, millimeter, down to micrometer, and then nanometer size is, is a thousand fold smaller. And Ultimately, when you break down these little plastic uh, products that we use all the time, as they degrade, they become smaller and smaller and smaller, but they never change. They don't become some other chemical. They just get smaller, and now they're everywhere. Yeah, and that's, I think, what's so concerning for many of us reading over this new study, and a lot of that concerns comes from the serious you know, health risks or health concerns involved in nanoplastic. Tell us some of those concerns and you know, what nanoplastics might be causing. It's a little premature to say there's absolutely health effects. There are some hints that there are problems. Uh, in my group published today that there are a lot more in placentas of the human body that, than we previously thought. Uh, is that aligning with birth outcomes? We don't know that yet. Um, we know that there's particles in your brain, uh, there's particles in your, your heart. Whether that causes the problem or not is not clearly, clearly shown yet, but the, here's the problem. The plastics in the environment are exponentially increasing. You know, every 10 to 15 years, the amount that's there is doubling in the environment. And so that's probably going to double in our bodies is about the same rate. And there's a fundamental tenant in my field of science of toxicology that is dose makes the poison. Wow, so nanoplastics are not just found in water bottles. Where else are they hiding? They're everywhere. Uh, I think. Almost a decade ago, people found it in Svalbard, which is an uh, island north of Norway. Uh, the plastics have gotten everywhere. I think they're in every major waterway, every major ocean. Uh, this study looks specifically at w bottled water, which we think of as being very clean. 
I think it would have been very healthy for them to compare it to tap water, to to pull something out of the Hudson as long as they're hanging out at Columbia University <laughs> and give us a better you know, demonstration of the breadth or the diversity of uh, plastics that uh, exists throughout our planet at this point. But I, I'm sure that with this new technology, that's what they're going to do. And we'll, we, we look forward to seeing those results. Yeah, it'll be fascinating to see what they find. Some experts have said plastic is, quote, toxic from birth. Can you explain what that term means? It's an interesting perspective. And, and, and I think they mean it's, it's toxic from the birth of the plastic. And that means that, you know, when you when you take fossil fuels and you refine it, there is exhaust coming from those petroleum refineries. And we have Cancer Alley down in Louisiana. Uh, the transport and spillage of this stuff uh, gets everywhere. And then there are plasticizers. There are chemicals that are built in to the, the plastics as they are, are created in, in different polymer shapes and sizes and things like that. And so those things, they're chemicals like phthalates, bisphenols, and, and we know that those can, at certain concentrations, also be toxic. And then now we see they degrade and they don't go away. They just become smaller and scatter everywhere. So we are worried about the health effects. Uh, these are, these are pr plastics we thought would be the solution to so much of life's problems. And in many ways they are, because food industry is clearly improved, uh, medical, the, 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 the practice of medicine is improved with plastics. But now we have a conundrum because we didn't anticipate this long-term problem. So this is certainly a long-term problem, or it seems like it to you know readers of this research when it comes to the health concerns, and we already went through those, but there's other issues like sustainability and environmental impact. Talk to us about those issues. Well, you know, these micro and nanoplastics, they come from plastics that have been on our, our, our planet for 40, 50 years. Um, we worry about the fresh new plastics that are maybe in cosmetic products or your micro fleece sweater that you just bought for Christmas. That is a part of the problem, but most of what we're worried about is the billions of tons. There is literally a ton of plastic waste for every human on this planet. And as that degrades over the next decade, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, it's contributing steadily and, and in a worsening manner. So sustainability is absolutely the problem. And what are we going to do to replace these materials? Do we, we can't just abandon them all at once. We're going to have to find some practical way to transition to, to something that's either more biodegradable, more biocompatible, or, um, you know, just something that we can better recycle and reutilize so it doesn't build up like plastics are doing. Well, I didn't even know. I mean, you just brought this up that these microplastics or nanoplastics are found in cosmetic materials and even clothing. Uh, it seems like it's impossible to get away from this. So how can Americans and people around the world stay safe going forward? I will, I will give credit to the cosmetics industry. They've, they've identified this as, as maybe a, a thing they don't need and a worry that they have as well. So I've seen a lot of cosmetic uh, companies pull back and say, we're not going to use it. And I, I applaud them for that. Uh, I hope other companies follow suit because it is going to be really hard for a global problem to be addressed when there's such a ubiquity of the products. And, and where do we go from here? This is... Um, Global commerce demands plastics. You see these islands in the ocean of plastics because of the spillage and waste products. Uh, we, need, we need dramatic global cooperation, which is not something we've been good at lately. And I think we need to be aware that humans individually, we do have a sort of role as a citizen to be responsible about recycling. But at the end of the day, the infrastructure needs to exist to make that efficient and, and practical. And that might not be doable. So we need to come up with other solutions of what we can do with these plastics that doesn't just leave them rotting in the ground. And to bring this full circle, we started with drinking water. So how can Americans stay safe? Do they just 
avoid bottled water altogether or as, as much as they can. I mean, you see, you know, reusable uh, water bottles oftentimes made of metal. I mean, is that a good path forward? Yeah, I mean, and that comes back to that responsible citizen piece. If you want to be somebody um, who, who pays attention, you know, does the right thing, absolutely get rid of the bottled water, use a, a reusable container, that's great. But there's a bigger picture, and it's not just water bottles that are contributing to these things. The stuff we ingest is going to be in our food. It's coming from agricultural products across the board. We get it from crops. We get it from probably the meats that we eat. So how to protect yourself? Honestly, the best hunch we have is that plastics get into our body through fats. And that might be an extrapolation. I don't know that there's a lot of evidence out there, but having a healthy diet is probably going to be your best bet. It's very good to know. And, you know, Matt, Matthew Campen, thank you so much for breaking it all down for us. This is such a such a, a, an issue we really don't talk about enough. So thanks for, um, you know, raising awareness about it. Absolutely. Thank you for covering this and having me on, Julia. Thank you. Mm -hmm.